We have been building up Sanguine Labs to be an innovative software company specialising in the development of cross-platform games and technology. Over the last year, we have been developing tools and libraries which have formed a foundation to enable us to start creating fun and innovative games. These tools, when released, will allow players to create their own content and will work on multiple platforms. One of the tools we have developed is the Content Design Tool. It allows a user to load in any image they like. Users can then place entities and various types of collision lines as they see fit. Our games can process the information in the world file and allows users to play the game with their created environment. This opens up a massive gap for user-driven content and creativity. At the moment, this tool is mainly used internally but is planned as a free release. I am now going to demonstrate to you how easy it is to load in a ready-made world file and make some alterations to it. I'm just going to load up CDT now. I'm going to load up a pre-made world called Wick Forest. At the moment, Wick Forest is still currently under development, but is very close to completion. If we just find the DOE2 folder. There we go. Now, once it's loaded, you'll be able to see that it's displayed the main background image along with various entities dotted around. On the left we have various tools. We have line, projectile line, square line, entities, waypoints, terrains and two select buttons. One for terrains and one for selecting all the other objects. The select tool allows for more information to be displayed about each of the entities and to move any object around the map. I am now going to draw some simple collision lines around a section of trees. I we'll just choose the line tool. This upon loading into one of our games will allow us to stop players movement over certain areas. To add to this we have projectile lines which stop the player from not only moving through it but allows the projectiles to fly through the lines themselves which is very useful especially when trying to uh, walk across say rivers but being able to fire across them instead. Here's an example of a projectile line. I'm going to place it just by the trees. When I let go, you notice it will turn purple to identify it better. I'm now going to de demonstrate the entity button, which is uh, located on the left. We have a portal. We can place two of these portals down on the map, for an example, and set their various attributes. So I'm just going to place one here and over here. Now if I choose my select tool from the left and then click on one of these portals I can add attributes on the right hand side in the attribute panel. I can either add them or delete them. For this one I'm going to add an attribute of name A sorry target target equals A and then name equals B and for the other portal I'm going to do the reverse name equals A and target equals B this then allows players to transport between these two entity coordinates so now I'm um, going to demonstrate the waypoint system we currently have in effect so if I choose waypoint from the right here and then place some on the map I then click the waypoint button on the left and this allows me to create lines between each of the waypoints I'm going to add a waypoint connection which points in the red team's direction I'm going to add another one of these and another one. This then allows our AI to travel to certain positions around the map seamlessly. Another feature I'm going to demonstrate to you is the collision square button. The collision square button allows us to add blocks of collision data a lot a bit quicker. This is very good because it allows for large areas because it allows less process intensive for our games compared to individual collision lines.
The next tool we're going to show you is our internal 2D animation tool. This allowed us to easily add animations to our characters, to the main menu, and the buttons. Once the tool has loaded, we first need to open up a project. As you can see, there's lots of animations within Defile of Eden 2. Any of these can actually be opened up with this editor. I'm going to choose the Defender Forester. You can now see that a lot of images have uh, displayed. These are actually all the, the main images that make up, that we use to actually get parts for the animation. Here we select and label each part. As you can see there's quite a lot of them. When parts go to other image sheets it automatically switches so we can then select them from the different images. And basically I just selected around the head again to show you how easy it is to select new parts. Now onto the actual animation of the images. So as you can see the Forester also has a lot of animations. I'm just quickly scrolling through them all. Now we're going to modify the upper attack melee right. As you can see it's made out of four frames but these can be interpolated between to make much smoother animation. The engine will do this for us. This is mostly just so we can actually test or smooth out some of the animations. So we can add new heads or any part we want. We can then select and we can rotate. We can raise or lower it in relation to the other parts. Or we can just remove the frame. And we can delete parts. So that's basically it on how to use our 2D Animation Studio.